Hey guys, how's it going? Kyle here with Dark Iron Diesel. Uh, today I'm just going to be doing a little video on a few things you should look at when you're buying a used diesel pickup truck. Uh, these are just some things that I look at when I'm looking at trucks or if my buddies are looking at trucks, I, I tell them to, to do these few things. Uh, this is by no means, you know, as good as taking your truck to the actual, to your trusted diesel shop and have them look over it. But these are just a few things you can do uh, without a scanner, without anything uh, you can do to check to see, you know, if there's any red flags on the truck you're looking at. So uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, ask in the comments. Look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. Shoot me a message and check out my personal YouTube account, Sass Prairie Boy. Anyways, let's get at her. So the truck I'm going to be using for an example, this is my personal truck, it's a 2003 5.9 Cummins with 6 speed standard. Uh, but I mean, this you can do these tests on, on all uh, diesel trucks, it really doesn't matter what kind and, and how new or old it is. But anyways, let's get under the hood here. Okay, so in my opinion, the most important thing that you can be looking at when you're buying a used diesel truck is blow-by. Now what blow-by is, is basically all the compression that happens in your cylinder. If your piston rings are getting worn out, some of that compression is gonna squeeze past your piston rings down into your actual crankcase or, or oil pan. You know, and that is, you know, a really good sign that the engine is tired, it's ready for a rebuild. So to do that test, we're going to start the truck and just leave it in neutral and start it, start it up. And then we're going to take the oil fill cap off and we're going to see, you know, if there's a bunch of air and kind of compression shooting out of there. Now, there might be a little bit of steam and whatever, that's okay. But, you know, we just want to make sure that it's not just puffing air out of there or any smoke. Okay, hopefully you can hear me here, but yeah, the engine is just running at an idle and I took this off. See, I can't feel anything coming out of there. There's no air, there's nothing. You can put the cap on it like that. You see it kind of vibrates off the engine, but I have like nothing for blow-by. So that is a very good sign if that's the first thing you're checking. Now use your discretion when you're checking blow-by. I mean, if there's a little bit coming out of there, it might not be a big deal. But if you take that cap off and it's just like doo, 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 shooting, shooting stuff out of there, then you know I would walk away from that one because it's gonna need a rebuild or uh, an engine replacement. Okay, the second thing we're gonna look at, uh, your upper rad hose. Now, this is probably an example of what you don't wanna see. See this rad hose? It is quite hard. Uh, you can actually look over here, see how it's bulging there. Uh, basically, I am pressuring up, which is a very good sign that my head gaskets, or sorry, my head gasket is worn out and is gonna need to be changed soon. So you don't wanna see it quite this hard. You know, when a truck is up to temperature, this should be firm, but this is, like I'm just looking at this now and I'm like, oh boy, I should, I'm probably gonna have to do my head gasket. So basically what happens is when your head gasket wears out, some of that compression uh, in your cylinders, it, it finds the weakest link and it gets through your head gasket and it goes into your cooling jets and uh, in your cooling system and it pressurizes this up. Now what will happen too is it will actually, you know, it will stop blowing heat because it will just, it will push so much compression into your cooling system that it won't even let coolant flow through your heater core so so you want this to be kind of firm but this is too hard if you see it's this rock hard then you probably have to replace a head gasket like i'm gonna have to do here now that i'm making this video i shouldn't have even made this video because now i'm gonna spend two grand doing a freaking head gasket job <laughs> I should say this too, that when you're checking your head gasket, uh, when you're checking that pressure in your upper rad hose, the truck has to be up to operating temperature. It's good to check that after you've test driven the truck. You want it to be warm and you want to step on it a couple times just to really see how much pressure is going to get in your cooling system. If the truck is cold and it's just idling, uh, it might not have any pressure in it, but as soon as you rev it up and you start to drive it, that might be when it starts to show its ugly side. So that's just uh, another thing I want to let you guys know. Another thing you can check, uh, this is my coolant reservoir. Uh, this isn't a very 
good one to look at, but on like a Duramax or a Power Stroke, when you can really see it, if you look in there, you check for oil. If you see oil in there or it's really dirty, it's black, you know, you could have a leaking uh, oil cooler or something like that. So you want the reservoir and the coolant inside of it to look good. You don't want it to be mixed with oil. That's another sign that you're gonna have to spend some money on the truck. Okay, what you also want to check is all your levels. You want to check your oil level, power steering reservoir. Uh, like I said, this thing's a standard, so it doesn't have a dipstick for the tranny, but if it's an automatic, you want to run the truck in neutral, and while it's running, check the oil level. And that's not necessarily, like if you see one of the oil levels a little bit low, that's not, you know, the end of the world. But what it's gonna tell you is how the previous owner took care of the truck. If you see that, you know, a few of the oil levels are low, then you know maybe he didn't do his maintenance very good or maybe it wasn't up to date and that's just a warning sign. Just something that you wanna keep in mind when you're thinking about buying a used diesel. So speaking about oil, uh, you wanna look for oil leaks. See, it's kinda wet here along my valve cover. Probably gonna have to change that gasket, but obviously I'm doing the head gasket on it anyways, so I'll change that gasket when I do it. Uh, the main thing is you wanna look, you wanna look underneath the truck. You wanna look for some bad oil leaks, you know, something that's physically dripping on the ground. That's a big red flag, especially if it's coming from your tranny, then it could be, you know, if it's leaking engine oil out of your bell housing, then you probably need a rear main engine seal. If the whole front of the engine is wet with oil, then there's a good chance you need a front engine seal or, you know, a timing cover gasket. Those are all, you know, they're pretty big jobs. So it's just another thing that, you know, you got to work it into the price of the truck. You know, is it worth it or not to you? So that's most of what I check in the engine compartment. Now you can get down here. What you need to do is you need to look at the tire tread. You need to like on my truck, it looks pretty good. It's not cupping, it's not wearing irregularly. If you notice that these front tires have a really weird wear pattern in them, then that's a good sign that you have some front engine or sorry, some front end work that needs to be done. You know, whether it's a wheel bearing, whether it's shocks, whether it's ball joints, whatever, you know, tires always show signs of front end wear. So have a look at the tread and if the tread looks good, I mean, I'm not saying that means your front end is good, but it's a good sign. If your tread is bad, then there's a sign that you're gonna have to replace some front end parts. Another thing you can do to check the front end, see how much steering travel or steering lash you have. So see how much I can turn my steering wheel. Just gonna put the camera on the wheel when I do that. See how I'm turning the, I'm turning the steering wheel, all that movement, and I'm not getting any actual movement out of my tires. And that's because my steering box is quite worn out. So I got a lot of steering play. Uh, but you know, it could also be tie rod ends, other stuff like that. So if the steering isn't tight, that's just more uh, info that leads towards, you know, front end parts or, you know, a steering box that's worn out like in my case. This is kind of bad. I'm really seeing a lot of stuff that I'm gonna have to fix on my truck in the near future. So I'm kind of happy I made this video, but part of me is kind of sad because, you know, I wanted to spend my money on other stuff, but you know, always gotta make sure you're up to date with your maintenance. And once you start letting stuff pile up, and it all just kind of trickles down and you get more and more stuff wrong with it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to spend some money to get this old girl, you know, in tip top shape. So obviously, you know, you guys are gonna go around the truck. You're gonna look at it. You're gonna see what condition it is. It's in, check for rust, you know, that kind of stuff. The better condition the outside of the truck is a good indicator on the condition of the internals of the truck as well. So have a good, good inspection, go over it and yeah. Another thing to check for is all the lights. When you turn on your truck, see what lights come on and what lights stay on. On my truck, see I just got the door ajar, no seat belt, and my engine light. The engine light goes off when I start it though. Uh, so yeah, I don't have any check engine lights, no ABS, nothing like that on this truck. That's another thing you wanna just be able to check. And if you do have an engine light on, it's just something that you're probably gonna have to fix. There we are with my truck running and there's uh, no engine lights on, nothing like that. So that's a good sign. Now it's a good thing to do is 
uh, go through your fan. You want to do that. You want to check to see if when you change the vents, if it blows out of the different vents and you want to go cold and hot, make sure that all changes because you know, the heater system inside a truck is pretty important to keep you comfortable. So if stuff like that isn't working right, then that's another thing you're gonna have to spend money on because you're gonna wanna fix it. Another thing that's good to do is uh, check to make sure it goes in four wheel drive high, it goes in four wheel drive low. Sometimes you're gonna have to put it in neutral or roll the truck forward and backwards for it to go into four wheel drive low, especially. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, check over everything, check see if the heated seats work, check see if the air condition works, you know, just kind of go through the truck and the less you find the better. And then the more you find, well, the more red flags equals the more chance that I would either try to get the price lower or I would just walk away from the deal altogether. Well, that about covers kind of what I go over when I'm looking at a used truck, a used diesel truck. Uh, I mean, I'm sure most of you guys know to check the oil levels, check the condition of the truck, uh, you know, take it for a drive, see how it drives, listen to the engine, listen to it shift, all that stuff. Just make sure it's good. The main things I want to kind of get into your head were check that blow by because, you know, if you have a lot of blow by, then your engine is pretty much toast and I wouldn't buy the truck. Uh, check your head gasket or your pressure and if you got pressure you know there's a good chance you might need to do a head gasket which just depends on how good a deal you're getting the truck for if you're paying top dollar for the truck and it's gonna need a head gasket well you know it depends a head gasket can be three you know eight thousand dollars three to eight thousand dollars depending on what kind of truck it is and what options you're doing when you're doing the head gasket so just something to think about but uh, yeah, all this stuff you can do yourself. You don't need no fancy scanner, nothing like that. Uh, like I said, it's always better to take the truck to your trusted mechanic shop, have them look over it. This is by no means, if it passes these tests, I'm not guaranteeing that you're not gonna have issues with it, but this is just kind of a video that's supposed to help you guys out. Just uh, hopefully you can catch you know, a bad apple before you sign that bill of sale and transfer the money over. So anyways, guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope it helped. Uh, please like and subscribe. And like I said, check my uh, my personal channel out, Sass Prairie Boy. I'll put a link in the description. And look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. And uh, you know, shoot me a message if you got any questions. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.